Hey everyone, today I'm going to go over how to pull stock prices into Google Sheets and then how to import that data into a Microsoft Excel workbook. So in the past, I've gone over how to use the stock history function in Excel, but that's only available on newer versions of, of Excel. And I've also gone over how to, how to pull in data from Yahoo Finance, but that's more ideal if you're looking for um, historical information as opposed to uh, stock prices for a lot of different stocks. And so that's what I'm going to cover in this video. So I'm going to start with getting the data into Google Sheets. So I'm going to create three fields here, one for the company name, the ticker, and then the stock price. So I'm going to enter Apple and its ticker symbol is AAPL. Disney is DIS, Amazon, AMZN. So to pull the stock price into Google Sheets is actually really simple. There is a function called Google Finance where you can enter the ticker, the attribute you want, the start date, the end date, and the interval. So because I just want the, the current share price, all I'm gonna do is reference the ticker and then for the attribute, I'm going to say price and that gives me the latest share price for Apple, Disney and Amazon. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could pull in historical information here and I'll quickly show you how you can do that. So again, I'll go back to Google finance reference Apple and then still I'm going to reference the price here, but now I'm going to enter a value for a start date and an end date. So for the start date, I can say, let's go back 30 days by using the today function minus 30. And then I want up until today, today function as well. And now it's going to return all the values that fall within that range. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that when you, when you run this function, it's going to return both a date column and a closing value column. And so if you wanted to pull, let's say the last 30 days of prices for Apple, Disney, and Amazon, you'd have to repeat this for each, each stock. And every time you do, it's going to include um, date column. And so what you'd probably want to do in that case, if you wanted to build a database of the last um, 30, 30 share price, 30 days worth of share prices for these stocks, you, you'd probably want to hide some of these, um, some of these values. If you, if you wanted to do it this way. But anyways, I just wanted to show you that it is possible to pull in historical values here. Um, another thing I wanted to note is that in my example here, I've pulled in um, the, the stock prices without referencing the exchange that these tickers are on. And while this works for popular tickers, especially if they're, they're unique, it's not gonna work in every case. So for example, a company like Air Canada, it trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange it is a ticker of AC. If I were just to copy this formula down, it's gonna give me the incorrect share price. That is not Air Canada's stock price. If I wanted to ensure that I'm getting the right one, I'd wanna add a prefix. So I type in TSE for the Toronto Stock Exchange, then AC. And now it gives me the correct share price for Air Canada. Now, I don't have to do this for Amazon because Google Finance knows which ticker I'm talking about. But if I wanted to be really careful, I could type in NASDAQ as a prefix. For Disney, it trades on the New York Stock Exchange, so I type in NYSC. For Apple, again, that one's on the NASDAQ, so I would type in that prefix for that one. So if you want to be careful and make sure you're pulling for the right exchange, you could do um, that and add a, add a prefix. What you may want to do is add one column for the exchange, one for the ticker, and then one to concatenate those values together. Um, but again, you may not need to, depending on which tickers you're you're pulling from. So, it you may end up doing a bit of trial and error to see okay which ones um, can Google Finance figure out correctly versus which ones do you need to help it out a little bit by by adding in the in the exchange that it's on. So in some cases it'll work, but just bear in mind that if you don't include the exchange, there's a possibility that it could pull um, a different ticker than what you're expecting. But 
let's say that we're we're good here. These stock prices are are good to go. And now the next step is importing this into Excel. Now, obviously, you could continue working in in Google Sheets and pulling in um, more prices and doing whatever analysis you wanted to. But I'm going to show you how you can pull this into an Excel, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet if you want to do that. And so Google Sheets makes it really easy to to share this information. If you go to the file section, there's a share button, publish to web. And now I can select, I just want to share, let's say sheet one. And I want them to be CSV values just to make the import process easier into Excel. And then I hit the publish button. Hit OK. And it's going to generate this link. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to switch over to Microsoft Excel. And now on the data tab, similar to how you'd use Power Query, here I'm going to select from web. And then what I'm going to do here is just enter that URL that I copied. Hit OK. And now it's going to load this data from Google Sheets. So now you can see because it's in a CSV format, it's it's really easy for Microsoft Excel to figure out the different fields and what I want to pull in. And so I don't need to do any additional transformations. I can just hit the load button and it populates into my spreadsheet. So that's how you pull in the stock prices into into Microsoft Excel using uh, Google Sheets. Um, the one other caveat I, I will point out is that in some cases, especially if you're dealing with with a big data set, if you if you've got you know dozens of, of tickers, uh, you may notice that um, it doesn't update instantaneously. That I've noticed sometimes there could be a lag of a few minutes or or, or longer. Um, otherwise. You just right click and hit refresh to update this data. But just bear in mind that it, it may not be up to the second um, based on what you what changes you've made on, on Google Sheets. So it may take some time for those updates to, to populate in here correctly. But as long as you're okay with uh, a little bit of a lag, then th this solution would work would work well for you to pull pull in the most recent stock prices. And there's really no limit as to the number of tickers that you could um, use this for. So it's a great way to pull in the data if you're not able to access the stock history function, or if you just want to pull in a lot of different um, a lot of different tickers. So that's how you pull in data into uh, Microsoft Excel using Google Sheets. Thanks for watching.